Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. This is webinar number eight. Uh, welcome. Uh, I want to dive straight in because today I want to take you to a really big country, India. And to be more precise, I'm going to take you to the slum area of Kolkata. And the photo we're going to be talk about, talking about is uh, this very dark one. So the woman in the center of this image is Aisha. She's an 18-year-old karate champion. And the woman on her left is her mother. And this photograph was taken on our first evening. We had just arrived to Kolkata. Uh, Aisha was to be featured in a documentary about uh, teenage girls that uh, are fighting for girls and young women's rights in their communities. I think we were going to be there for about a week. And um, like I said, this uh, image was taken on the very first evening when we had uh, agreed to meet them at their house and just uh, talk through the week and get to know each other and exchange gifts, etc. And so there's a little anecdote about why this photograph is so dark, because as you can see, there's only one gas light, uh, which is lighting the whole house. The brother who was also present explained to me that they hadn't been able to pay the electricity for the last three months, and that's why they were cut off. So they were quite a poor family. And so this, this story made sense to me. And then when we were finished, we walked back to the main road because the, the taxi we wanted to call, I mean, the road's very small where they live, so we had to walk to the main road. And as we got there, and maybe the taxi was already there, I don't know, I somehow realized that I had to go back to the house. I had to walk back to the house. And the brother had come with us, so I shared this with the brother. I said, you know, I have to turn around, quickly run over there and uh, get something or I don't know, and then come back here. Um, and so he went all pale. And he started really quickly walking, almost running towards the house in front of me while I was going normal speed. And about halfway, I looked up and I realized that a light was flooding from the windows and the, and the door of their house. So in the end, they did have electricity. Um, and before I got there, it was turned off again, obviously, because the brother went there to, you know, to turn it off and to warn whoever was there to turn it off. And this made me think a lot. Um, Obviously, I, you know, uh, needless to say, I didn't say anything about it and uh, I acted like I hadn't noticed. But this made me think a lot because in my eyes, these people were really poor already. We were in a slum area of Kolkata. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, people live on very, very little in that area. And the house as well, it was very simple. They were very, you know, um, leading a very simple life. Um, but then making an attempt at... Uh, seeming to be even more poor really somehow interested me. Like, why would they do that? Maybe, maybe they felt that my empathy for them would somehow grow if they seemed more poor. It's not the first time that this happens to me. Um, it's happened to me in different, different occasions in, in different countries. Um, or maybe they felt that uh, we were able to help them in some way. Uh, supporting them, which is obvious. It's a, that's a very obvious kind of expectation. And uh, uh, it's also something that uh, that we think about when, when we are working with people who live in poverty, how we can also leave something behind and, and help them. But I just found this really curious and I never really, never really forgot this anecdote. And I never really ceased to think about it. So um, let's get back to Aisha for, for a second. Like I said, Aisha was a karate champion. She became world champion uh, one year. Uh, and upon hearing of some of the problems that young women face in India, she decided to uh, teach uh, other, other teenage girls and young women karate for free every Sunday afternoon in a local park. And that's really what we were there to do, to film this whole process and to do a portrait about Aisha. And so let me share with you a small piece of uh, that film so you get a, a better idea about what a wonderful person she is. Eight, 
seven, eight, and breathing. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's all of my money. Yeah, that's it. That's our block on it. Bend down. Do you know what? Block, two block, one. Yeah. Roll up, Adi. Sunday, Sunday. Second, for you. पांच पांच बजे हैव बजे आती है सेकने के लिए वो लोग बच्चे सब मिला के आती है लड़के सेकने बहुत ज़्यादा आती है गर्ल कम भी आती है सब लड़के नकाब पहन के सेकती है कराटे इसका पहन के फिर भी वो लोग प्रमु ने जब फिर भी वो लोग सेकती है कराटे एक हजार ज़्यादा आते हैं लड़कियाँ। नील ये करते हैं, सीखते हैं। मैं शेर मेरा आवाज़ बहुत तेज़ आता है। शेर नहीं बन जाते। कराते कराते हम ही नहीं आते। आयशा एक खूब पर्सन है, नहीं है? And it gets more incredible actually when you know that Aisha actually suffers from a very, very severe kind of epilepsy. Um, and that's how she got into karate to start with. She started training her body because uh, she wanted it to be able to deal with the physical challenges that this illness uh, bring about once in a while. Um, and this film, this clip from this film you just saw, Girl Connected, uh, this film is going to bring us to Bangladesh in about a week and a half in episode number 12. And there's another story related to another image in the book. So stay tuned for that. Um, I want to show you the image of our next episode. And the next episode is um, Monday the 4th of May. And this episode is going to take us to one of my very favorite spots in the world. Um, a little town called Jinja in Uganda. Uh, so for now, uh, thanks very much. You can uh, go to the website again if you want uh, if you want to see some of the older episodes or if you want to purchase the book if you don't have it yet. Um, the website is whyicryonairplanes.com and I'll also be posting a discount code with which you can get a 25% discount on the purchase of your book. So thanks for tuning in and I hope to see you in a couple of days.